Hello, Velocity Banking students and Kingdom citizens. Denzel Rodriguez here, personal finance geek of the 21st century. Today, we are going to dive deep down the rabbit hole of personal finance. We are going to be analyzing a financial situation. Our primary goal is to pay off debt as quickly as possible and position us to 10x our income, learn about tax. This person on the board here has a desire to uh, step into the tax world and potentially start a business doing that so she can walk away from her career job at some point, right? I think she loves what she does, but knows that can't do it forever, right? So we have to develop skills that can automate our money, put us in a position where we do not have to work. We just want to work, want to give, want to be a cheerful and great steward over resources as a wise king and queen in the kingdom of heaven here on earth with God's influence. So to start things off, we are dealing with an individual who is a first responder, has been working in that position for 14 years. So she has steady income. We have as low as $5,568.48 to as high as $6,500. She has been consistently working overtime in the last, I'd say, 90 days or so. We are now in September of 2020, the beginning of September 2020, as I record this video. She also has a side hustle where she can easily bring in $1,000 in any given weekend, right? Or in any given week. So I did not include that on the board. I'm not relying on that, but that is something that will expedite everything you see on the board here today. So just keep that in mind, put that off to the side. This person on the board here does have a side hustle. So she is going to improve my number. So what I went ahead and did, like I always do in most of my videos, is I like to underestimate results. I like to be conservative on our income, conservative on our cash flow, and I like to overestimate on expenses to really maximize uh, our velocity banking plan, our personal financial plan, really being... Uh, trying to be as accurate as possible because numbers will change. Things will happen. Emergencies will happen. You spend more money one month. You spend less money the next month. It fluctuates. So if we can create a strategy that performs under what you should actually do, it actually motivates you to do better when you're beating the teacher, right? When the student beats the teacher, it's very, very motivating. It creates a lot of momentum. So I do that on purpose psychologically, but then also to cover my own, you know what, right? I don't want to over uh, a promise, right? I like to under promise, over deliver to my clients. That's really the best way to do it overall, psychological wise, when you're looking at your finances and just, you know, just to really boost up your energy as a person. So we got the income. She has a side hustle, our expenses are $5,350.88 a month. Currently, that is everything included, okay? Saving, investing, tithing, giving, living, debt payments, everything that you spend money on must be included in your four major numbers to have an accurate reading on what you're currently dealing with in your financial situation. So that's what we have there. The next thing is we have a total debt of 221000 $31.89 so. Okay, that leaves us with a net conservative, super conservative cash flow of $217.60. It can be as high as $800 to $1,000 easily in any given month because of that side hustle and the fact that she has been consistently working overtime as a first responder. In addition to the four major numbers, we do have a debt tool in place. We have a personal, unsecured, revolving line of credit for $20,000 at a 10.25% simple interest rate. Okay, the interest is calculated daily, right? It is not compounded. 
it is daily interest. And we're going to get into exactly what I mean by that because I feel like there's a lot of confusion. There's a difference between um, the way your credit cards charge you compounded interest versus your PLOCs and HELOCs, the way they charge us interest. It's a little bit different. It's in our favor when we're using the PLOC and the HELOC. All right, so simple interest, not amortized. $20,000 at U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank is a very uh, popular bank. I believe they're nationwide. So if someone is looking for a decent personal line of credit, there you go. That's one bank. But don't just rely on what I say. Please do your research. Please do your homework. Survey your area. Look at multiple banks. Do all the pregame work that Denzel says to do. Right. Follow the rules. Right. Mark all your checks before you apply for anything. Make sure you're positioned. Take all the guessing work out of getting approved for a PLOC or a HELOC or any type of debt tool. Take all the guessing work out of it. Do all the preliminary work, all the pregame work, get your credit right, all that good stuff to try and get the best debt tool for yourself. OK, so we've got our four major numbers. We've got the PLOC, our debt tool. We have $10,000 cash on hand. We have about 94,000 in other assets like retirement assets. And we have a $100,000 whole life insurance policy with State Farm. Okay. This is a policy that she's had before meeting me. So this isn't, this wasn't designed uh, as a high cash value life insurance policy. It was designed, I would say, a traditional whole life policy. Now, she does have. Uh, 10,400 and some change in cash value, which we will be using in this scenario today. So those are all the four major numbers, our debt tools, our assets, right? Cash on hand. Now let's go into the debts. These are the debts broken down that she is currently dealing with, right? So we have a student loan debt, $3,133.90. We have the monthly payment at $391.23 at a 2.43% interest rate, amortized. We also have a tax debt from the IRS, $4,470.08. Monthly payment, $250. The interest rate is roughly over 5%, I believe. We weren't able to gather that exact number. IRS was being a little stingy on giving us all the information. So she's in the process of getting that but I do believe it's it's over 5%. Next, we have a vehicle. We have a car, $67,893.23. Boy, did she get herself a nice whip, okay? For that nice whip, she pays a nice, lovely payment of $1,025.97 at a 3.99% amortized rate. And this is the breakdown. She has 75 payments left, and it starts September 14th, 2020, which is actually my mother's birthday. So God bless her. God bless the woman on the board here. And God bless everybody listening, paying attention, taking lots of notes. As you can see, if you were to take the 102597 times it by 75 months, you get $76,947.75. Minus that from what's actually owed, the financing, you get $9,054.52. That is what we're dealing with. That is the goal is to minimize our interest costs of borrowing when we're using this concept. We are identifying where our cash cows are, right? Where the hinder is, wherever our, our money is being locked up and we want to free it up, but we got to get past that interest. We need to beat the interest to make sense of borrowing from Peter to pay Paul, okay? Because we are dealing with a relatively high interest rate on the PLOCs, 10.25%. Not exactly my favorite number in the world. I prefer, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, anything above 10, anything above 15% starts to get a little iffy, right? So we have to make sure that we are, in fact, saving money and not just borrowing from Peter to pay Paul to look cool, right? Well, we want to actually beat the traditional method of debt snowball or debt avalanche. So we have to make sense of that to the other guys so that we don't look crazy, right? We look crazy as it is. 
right? You're listening to a 24 year old, right? So it can be a little rough, but we're going to make it through. You're dealing with a king. So moving along, the last debt we have is a mortgage. Oh, $144,765.28. Monthly payment is $1,267.95. You can see the breakdown, principal, interest, escrow, and the interest rate is 5.38%. So we're not going to pay attention to the mortgage as of right now. Okay, our focus is to maximize cash flow as quickly as possible, make our first chunk as quickly as possible on the proper date and time so that we can save the most amount of interest and offset our borrowing cost to nearly zero and actually be in the positive, actually make money in the process of paying off debt, which is pretty nice. We're building up our credit. We're covering all assets, right? All aspects. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Now that I've explained all the details, okay, let's get into the nitty gritty. The very first thing I told her to do recommended, said, hey, this makes sense, is to actually take out a policy loan out of her existing whole life policy. There's $10,000 of cash value there. So I said, hey, let's do about an $8,000 loan, right? And we're going to pay off the tax debt and we're going to pay off the student loan. That is a instant cash flow gain in the month of September of $641.23 right? I can get access to that money within a week, right? Write the, write the check or have it direct deposited to my checking account, which would be faster. So that's a no brainer. You redirect the interest that you're paying to the student loan and the tax, and you're going to pay yourself back that interest over time. The idea is to actually not pay back the policy loan right away. Okay. We don't want to do it right away. We're trying to get that cash flow, that 641.23, and we're going to put it elsewhere to pay off even more debt, even faster, and then come back to the policy loan later on down the line. Okay, so that's the very first move. The very second move is determining what our chunk amount is going to be. Ideally, when I have a debt tool, I like to chunk around 66%, 20,000 times 66%. It's 13200 Now, because this person has a very steady income, steady job, 14 years in the business, in her career, right, can make as high as $6,500 so she can cash flow in the neighborhood of 1000 or even 2000 with her side hustle that I didn't even include on the board here. So there's some, you know, she can really bring in a lot of cheddar in any given month. So with those factors... And also her personal mentality and behavior. This person is a go-getter. She works hard. She works overtime. She's committed to her finances. So I like to factor in those things when I'm talking to my clients, which makes me violate some of my fundamental rules, such as the 66% rule. So if you've seen some of my other videos where I chunk higher than the normal 66% range, just understand that I am factoring in other things that motivates me to uh, increase our chunk amount. So in this case, I said, all right, to get our feet wet, right? We just started things out. Let's do a $15,000 chunk at the vehicle, 3.99%. We're shifting 3.99% to 10.25%. Denzel, you got to make sense of that. We got to make sure we're not steering people in the wrong direction. We need to look at the numbers and identify it clearly. So let's go over how exactly this personal line of credit is calculating simple interest because simple interest can mean quite a few things sometimes, right? Just like I, so with a credit card, if I owed $10,000 on September 1st, I do nothing for 30 days, come October 1st, if all I do is pay the monthly minimum payment, say it's like 50 bucks, damn near all of that is going to go towards interest. So there's going to be an interest rate that gets calculated on the whole 10,000 that will get added 
in October. So 10,000 will become like 10,000 and some change. Although she, the person paid $50, they don't actually bring the balance down right away. This is why when you look at your credit cards and if it says, okay, if you were to make the monthly minimum payment, you'll pay your credit card off in 14.6 years. And you're like, hell no. What the heck? That's crazy. That doesn't make sense. That's what simple interest compounded is, meaning 10,000 times, say, 10.25%, whatever that number is, you then divide it by 365 days, okay? And then it, it'll be like a couple dollars and, and some change, right? Well, on September 1st, you'll get charged a certain amount. On September 2nd, it'll be a little higher. And September 3rd, September 4th, September 5th. And it just keeps, so it compounds itself. So it's like you're getting double charged on credit card interest, which is why they're so hard to pay off for a lot of Americans. Because they truly do not understand how credit cards uh, work with interest. So that is not the type of debt that we're dealing with. This is the type of interest rate that we're dealing with with this uh, debt tool, our, our personal line of credit at the 10.25%. So if I was to do a $15,000 withdrawal to make a chunk at the vehicle, which would bring the balance down to 52893 The payment is on September 14th. I'm still going to make that payment on September 14th of 10.25.97. I'm still going to make that payment. I'm making a principal only payment, which is the chunk, and then I'm still going to make my regular monthly payment. So 15,000 times 10.25%, you're going to get a number. It's like 1,500 and some change, I think. Divide that by 365 days, you're going to get $4.21. Okay, hear me out. If all I did was take out 15k pay the monthly minimum payment for the next 12 months the most i can possibly pay is around 1500 dollars. so here's the number right here 15,000 times 10.25 percent is 1537 dollars and 50 cents this is the most amount of interest i will pay in 12 months i cannot pay more than that because the way they calculate the monthly payment on PLOX is probably like 2% of the balance, right? So they're, gonna, they're going to um, have a bit of a higher monthly payment, and it's usually based off of a term, a three-year, a five-year term. So when you're dealing with PLOX, you want to ask, hey, what's the term? Is it open-ended, right, where it's just open forever, or does it have a five-year expiration date on it, like a five-year term? Because that's how the payments would be calculated to pay it off in five years so that it doesn't turn into an amortized loan later on, All right? So $4.21, that $4.21 will stay the same, okay? So on September 1st, I'll get charged $4.21. September 2nd, $4.21. September 3rd, $4.21. However long I owe 15,000 is how much interest I'll get charged on 15,000 and 15,000 only. So it's simple interest calculated daily, but it doesn't compound in a way that the number goes up. It stays the same. So technically it's simple interest compounded. So when the bank tells you that it's simple interest compounded, they're, they're, they're giving you the factual like terminology. You just want to make sure that it's not like a credit card. Hey, if I owe 15, like you can even talk to the, the loan officer and run a scenario. Hey, so if I take 15 grand out, uh, the, the, the interest rate 10.25%, the average daily rate is blah, blah, blah. And it's, uh, you know, an average of this amount. Does that stay the same for as long as I owe 15K? Right. And another indicator when you're looking at your line of credit is when it says you only get charged interest on what you borrow. You only get charged interest on what you borrow. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay. So that interest doesn't actually get tacked on until the due date, right? Credit cards is the same way, but it's like it's going up and up and up. And then if all you do is pay the monthly minimum or a little bit extra, you don't actually pay off the balance in full. You know, it, it gets harder. With this line of credit, this particular debt tool and the strategy that we tie to it, we're paying way more 
than the monthly minimum payment. We're paying way more than extra payments. We're paying into it our entire income, all right, which removes the ability for the interest to compound at the four dollars and twenty-one cents. Okay, so now let's 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 dive even further. Okay, I'm getting excited. So our first chunk is fifteen thousand dollars principal only payment. So the very first step, money comes out of the line of credit, personal withdrawal. I preferably like you to have your line of credit and your checking account at the same bank. This promotes speed, promotes velocity. It allows us convenience. So we don't have to do external transfers. You don't have to worry about any fees that one or the other bank may have. So if you're going to do this concept, try to have your banking in all one location, all your income going to one location. This creates convenience, creates velocity with your money. So step one, 15K comes out, withdrawal to my checking account. Step two, all my income, all money I have on hand gets sent directly to the line of credit. In her case, we have $10,000 cash on hand. So as soon as she takes $15,000 out, she's going to send $10,000 back in. Right? Principal payment. Bam. All the way in. Right? She's still going to have a monthly payment the following month. Right? Or, in some cases, what a lot of personal line of credit to do is that they actually push out the due date like three, four months, depending on how much you overpay. So in this case, instead of paying $4.21 on $15,000, since I'm not going to owe $15,000 for more than 24 hours, I'm actually going to only owe, say, about uh, five grand. And I made a little mistake here. It's actually 5,000 times 10.25% divided by 365 days you get $1.40. So fix that mistake right there. 5,000 times 10.25% equals 365 divided by 365 days. Bam, $1.40. So I'm actually going to pay $1.40 on that first day. Now what happens? Over the course of 30 days, I'm going to withdraw money back out of the line of credit back to my checking account to pay any and all bills that require cash, right? I'm gonna withdraw this money on an average of every three to five days. So if I made the chunk on a Monday, and by the way, the best time to make that chunk payment is going to be preferably on the day you get paid, because that's the day you have the most amount of money. So if you're a couple, you guys get, you guys have a week where you guys both get paid in that same week, it's most likely that week that you'll have the most amount of cash. But for most people, it's typically at the beginning of the month, towards the end of the month, going into the beginning of the new month. That period right there is when you'll have cash flow from the prior month, your last paycheck, and then that new paycheck coming in for the beginning of the next month. That's like there a nice little period there where you have the most amount of cash to throw right back into the line of credit. So to recap, first step, 15K comes out, withdrawal to the checking account, Checking account makes the 15000 principal only payment to the vehicle. Second step, same exact day. 10000 all income cash on hand goes right into the line of credit. Boom, done. You don't have a payment for that month. Probably won't have a payment for the next two, three, four months. Okay? You now are only going to get charged interest on that new balance. $5,000. $1.40. Now, same exact day. You're going to say, okay, if I did a chunk on Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, about three to five days, how much money am I going to spend? Let's say it's uh, $1,500. So what she would do is withdraw $1,500 and maybe a buffer of $100 to $200 just in case she forgets an expense. Does that make sense? We want to simply take out only what we need when we need it. We are replacing the purpose of the checking account to just simply pay bills and we are giving our line of credit a new purpose which is to simply hold money 
That's what checking accounts do. They hold money. Well, our line of credit is going to be doing that for a period of time. We're trying to minimize our cost of borrowing as much as humanly possible. Okay? So money comes out. Money goes in. Expenses are now $641.23 less. So it's actually going to be $4,709.65 moving forward. Now, for this particular situation, the actual output will be uh, $3,441.70 for the month of September because she already made her mortgage payment for the beginning of her mortgage payment was on September 1st. So she already made that. We're good. So actually the rest of the month, she's going to get her paychecks, some side hustle work, whatever it is. I'm being super conservative. I wrote out two different scenarios here. So if we didn't include that and we said 10,000 went in after 15K coming out, 4709.65 comes back out, the number would be 9,709.65. That would be the highest number in the month of September that I would owe on the line of credit. So you take that number, times it by 10.25%, divide by 365, boom, $2.75 for that day, for however long I owe 9,709. Now, what's going to happen is money's coming in, money's coming out, money's going in, money's coming out. So we want to get an average daily expense rate. The way we do that is we add the three numbers up. The lowest number that the line of credit goes to, the highest number it was originally at, originally at, and then the number at the end of the month that it'll most likely be at. So add all three numbers up, you get $8.36. We got to get the median number divided by three. You get two dollars and seventy eight cents. Two dollars and seventy eight cents is my average daily cost of borrowing from a line of credit at ten point two five percent. That's incredible. So two point seven eight times it by 30 days. You get eighty three dollars and sixty cents. That is my borrowing cost for the first month of shifting fifteen thousand from my P lock into the vehicle, shifting 15,000 out of the vehicle into the P-Lock. Let me ask you a question. Did I remove debt? Technically, no. I'm still in debt, $67,000. What I did do was remove interest, okay? Understand that with a 3.99% amortized loan, that $9,054.52 is going to show up in the first few years of that 75 uh, term loan. So majority of that interest is in the beginning. Well, if I remove it in the beginning, right, I save the most amount of money. We're at the we're at the very beginning of this debt, which is why it makes sense to shift 3.99 to 10.25. I am doing a very advanced debt consolidation move. That's what we're doing here. That's what occurred so far. All we did was debt consolidation. I took 15 out of line of credit, put it on the car. 15 came out of the car, back into the line of credit. Now velocity banking begins. Income goes in, expenses come out, cash flow stays. 100% of my cash flow does not get charged interest. This is incredible. Which means that the faster I bring that line of credit to zero, the faster I can chunk again. All right. So conservatively speaking, end of September balance will be at 970965. End of October drops down to 8,850.82. I'm basically going by the cash flow, the new cash flow, which is 641.23 plus the 217.60. Okay. We're at 800 plus and some change. By December, worse, worse, worst case scenario, the balance is at somewhere around 7,133.16 and then add interest, you're probably in the neighborhood of uh, 7,300, okay? That's not including the side hustle. That's not including working extra hours. She has been consistently doing these things. So in reality, here's what the numbers will most likely look like. And these are also conservative because this is also not including how much more money she can bring in from the side hustle. 
right? It just went over the 65. So I use the 65 number. The fact that in September, we're actually only spending 3,441.70. That's what's actually coming out of the line of credit. So end of September, the balance is down to 8,441.70. October, down to 6,651.35. November, drops down to 4,861. December is a month where the line of credit technically will hit zero. And then I, the only thing that's coming out now is bills, right? 3,070.65 for that particular month. Now, that's velocity banking in the line of credit. Now we're going to add some more juice to this because we want to reduce our borrowing costs as much as humanly possible. So simultaneously, while doing velocity banking on a day-to-day -day basis, she is also going to be using her credit card or credit cards to run any and all bills that can be paid with her credit card with no fees, food, gas, miscellaneous, phone bills, subscriptions, all of that. In her personal finances, we have roughly $1,800 and could be a lot more of bills, again, being conservative, about $1,800 of bills that we can run through a credit card. If I do this, I'm going to get an average of 1% to 3% in cashback rewards. She's going to use her favorite credit card that gives her the most amount of cashback rewards. So roughly every single month moving forward, I'm going to get about $18 to $36 of cashback rewards. So all I did was take $83.60, which is my average cost of borrowing in that first month of doing velocity banking that first chunk minus 18 that number goes down to 65 dollars and 60 cents now i'm sure you can agree with me that out of 1025 dollars and 97 cents about maybe three four hundred dollars of that is interest that i'm removing immediately so it's the same this 65 60 is coming from here. It's not coming from uh, like I'm pay paying additional. No, it's coming out of this loan. It's coming out of that 9,054.52. And now I'm paying a portion of that for a period of time. The goal is to get rid of that interest as quickly as possible, remove it, right? So 3.99 is a lot higher than 3.99. It's more like 13, 14% if you were to do the math, right? times 67,893, 23 times that by like 13% or so, you're, you'll get around this number. So 13.99 turns into, uh, 3.99 turns into 13.99 or 13, 14%. Looks pretty ugly. So now that I've justified moving 3.99 to 10.25, doing Velocity banking, dumping all my income in, taking expenses out, cash flow stays, using your credit card, any and all extra income goes into the line of credit. Now we have to determine, well, when do I make my next chunk towards debt? And here's an interesting scenario, an interesting case here where I do not have to wait to hit zero on my line of credit before I make my next chunk. So I'm projecting our second chunk will most likely occur in December or January, December of 2020 or January of 2021. If it's in December and the balance is at 3,000, we'll probably do about a $12,000 chunk, okay? If it's at zero, which I'm sure she's going to do, the chunk will be in the neighborhood of 15K. Right, so this is a absolute worst case scenario. This is like her like not working basically. But that is not, that has not been the case. So very confident, 14 years working, solid career, first responder. She's even taking a course right now to increase her income via a promotion. Like I said, factoring in all these behaviors, these mentalities of different individuals that I work with makes me want to go a little faster, really push this concept a little bit harder and getting those results that we want. So when you're looking at your own personal finances, evaluate yourself. How 
you know, how, how active am I in my finances? How willing am I to get this line of credit down as fast as possible? It's really up to you. Okay. So our second chunk is going to be somewhere around the neighborhood of 12 to 15 K. I use the 12 K number. So if you were to do 12,000 minus 52,893.23 minus four payments of 1025.97, cause remember we're still making that monthly payment. That monthly payment is now going to be significantly more than if I was to just make extra payments of $800, right? In four months, it's impossible to make an extra payment of 15 grand towards the car. Impossible. Not going to happen. Like if she was doing debt snowball, she could probably make an extra payment in four months of half that number, which is why this puts us way ahead of debt snowball. And this justifies us borrowing money, borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. Peter doesn't charge us any interest. Paul was charging the interest. I offset my interest because Peter didn't uh, pay me. In I messed myself up there. Borrow from Peter to pay Paul. Peter didn't charge me interest. Jesus. Hope you guys are really, really getting this. This is, this is powerful stuff. So one more addition, I wrote a little note here, is that she can actually switch a lot of her bills to annual to save money, if you can. So if you're looking at your own personal finances, you can see what, what bills can I switch to annual that will save me some money, right? So in her case, we have that whole life insurance policy that she's paying monthly. I said, hey, listen, let's switch to annual. We're going to save money. Right, the insurance company charges us less if we give them the money up front. That means there's more cash value in the policy. That means the cash value grows throughout the whole year, as opposed to over, you know, little by little. The whole amount grows for the whole year, so the policy actually might even perform better than someone that pays in monthly, and that's just de facto. That's facts. Okay. Hope you're getting this stuff. You might have to watch this five times over before you get it. It's worth it. Promise you. So let's say we're in December, January, right? We make that second chunk. Here's what occurs. The break-even point. The balance is going to be somewhere around 37000 and some change, right? Just under thirty-eight k. That's nearly half of the car paid off already. There comes a time where velocity banking will not make sense when you're dealing with very low amortized loans, okay? So at the beginning of an amortized loan, whether it's student loan, car loan, personal loan, mortgage, that's the best time to really go after that particular debt. Now that we're like four or five months in to the velocity banking strategy, we've done two chunks, right? You've hit that break even point, which is about, it occurs usually when you've paid about 40% to nearly 50% of the original debt. So although it's only been four months, that 75 goes down to like 45 payments left. The 102597, significantly more of that payment is now principal. So I bring this up to say that we are not going to continue to use the PLOC at the 10.25% to pay off that debt. Although I would be getting a large cash flow gain, I'm actually, I'm going to start paying more in interest. This can occur. So when this occurs, we have to identify our PLOC. We need to restructure that. We need to upgrade. So I wrote a little note here saying in 2021, I need to upgrade that debt tool from a PLOC to a HELOC going from a 10.25% rate down to about a, you know, 5% or lower. That's going to be really beneficial. So the way we would do that is come that second chunk, doing velocity banking, still making the monthly payment, right? That car payment is dropping down now. Most of that is interest, I mean, uh, principal, right? Each and every month, as soon as she hits zero on the line of credit, 
our third chunk, right? As soon as you hit zero or close to zero, kind of like what happened here, okay? Which will take us about mm, four or five months again to bring the line of credit back down, especially with our side hustle, working extra hours, all that good stuff. The third chunk is actually going to be at the mortgage, 5.38%. That mortgage is still at the, you know, the early stages of that loan. We still have quite a bit of time left on that mortgage. What I want to do is create instant equity in that property so that I can go back to the bank, get a HELOC and restructure my debt tool to have a lower rate. Another thing I could do is get a credit card at a 0% offer on balance transfers and purchases and a credit card that does not charge a balance transfer fee. It's truly 0%, no fees whatsoever. I could do that as well. I would do it after I get approved for the HELOC, not before because I don't want to hinder my approval. We're paying off a lot of debt here, right? We're making our monthly payments on everything else. Two debts got removed. The car is now half come beginning of 2021. And I'm consistently paying my mortgage payment. So what I want to do is that third chunk is going to be roughly twelve to 15000 again. I'm going to throw it right on the property. Right, I may need to do at least one to two chunks. It just depends on the value of the home, amount of LTV, the, the, the bank that we go with, the interest rate, all that good stuff. I may need to do one to two chunks. So I'm assuming that by summer of 2021 being the earliest or by fall being the latest of 2021 is when I would apply for a HELOC before I come back to the car loan, before I become, before I come back to that, I just want to reduce that 10.25. I don't love that number. I worked with it. You saw how I worked with it. Made the most out of it. Could be better, right? We made the most out of it. We're going to upgrade it. Our credit's going to be fantastic six to nine months from now. So I apply for a HELOC. It takes about a month, right, to get approved or so. Let's say I get a twenty thousand dollar HELOC at a uh, you know introductory rate of uh, I don't know four percent five percent whatever it is it could be lower three two point nine they're out there they exist you gotta do your research you gotta do your homework you gotta look it up do the pregame work follow the rules build a relationship right connect with the bank right you want to be an asset to them not a liability okay you want to partner with them so if I can do that. Then I'm going to come back to the vehicle. So I'm not going to pay the mortgage. I'm not going to chunk at the mortgage. I'm going to stop chunking at the mortgage. I'm going to come back to the vehicle because I want that cash flow. There ain't going to be that much interest savings left. A couple thousand, right? But I want that cash flow. That's huge. That's a big payday right there. Free up $1,000 of cash flow. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So our third chunk, right, at the mortgage, our fourth chunk, Potentially we'll be at the mortgage in 2021 around like say summer, right? Or I should say uh, what comes before summer? Spring. Yeah, spring around that time, like April-ish, right? Uh, so one to two chunks. Transition to a HELOC. As soon as, it, as soon as the PLOC gets to like zero close to it, transition to a HELOC. There's going to be equity, right? Making six to 12 mortgage payments, and then two chunks, there's going to be about 20, 20 plus thousand easily, right? In equity, I can easily access. And then mind you, if the value of the homes go up, hopefully if they go down, there's still going to be enough equity. I can pull some money out, do some magic. That fifth chunk, it's going to either be the fourth or the fifth chunk. I come back to the car. The car is going to be damn near wiped out. 1025, 1025 from 2021 20, January all the way to summer or fall, right? So that fifth chunk most likely will pay off the car, if not damn near paid off, where basically the payments is going to remove it by the end of 2021. So by the end of 2021, I removed the student loan debt, the tax debt, the vehicle going into 2022. I'll be hitting up the mortgage unless she wants to redirect her strategy into building her business 
and 10xing your income, right? Then we can put paying off debt on the side, go build a business, go 10x her income. And then at any point, she can write a check. Just pay off all her debt in one shot if she wants to. If not, we keep it going. But see, when I get to 2021, uh, no, when I get to 2022, I'm only going to chunk maybe one or two more times from that HELOC. Again, it's going to occur. The break-even point, 5.38%. She pays 30 to 40% of the mortgage. We need to upgrade our HELOC once more. So we're going to go from a second position HELOC, right, is what we would have to do the first time when we're applying in 2021. And we're going to upgrade to a first position HELOC. Remove the entire mortgage. Get a new interest rate. It's like the best way to refinance, basically. You're basically refinancing the mortgage. You're replacing your first lien mortgage with a first lien HELOC. Home equity line of credit, not a home equity loan. Home equity line of credit, calculated simple interest, revolving. Draw period, 10 years, 15 years, whatever it is. And then she can just start dumping all her income into that HELOC. Same thing, Velocity Banking. All income goes in, expenses come out. What's really cool about those first position HELOCs is that you can have your paychecks directly deposited into the HELOC. That's going to save you time, save you money, save you interest. And mind you, with credit cards, oy, we can go even faster. So at any point in time, towards like the end of 2021, going into 2022, I definitely am going to encourage her after getting a HELOC Say, hey, let's go get a freaking 0% credit card for like 10 or 15K with really any bank, the banks that send us offers in the mail, and let's get the best one, 0% on purchases, 0% on balance transfers. If I do the purchase route, it'll be like, say, 0% for 15 months, I'll tell it, look, run damn near all your bills, right? And do, do the switch annual, pay everything annual. Right, you create cash flow instantaneously, cash back rewards, pay the monthly minimum payment on that credit card for 14 months, drive all your cash flow into that HELOC, chunking, going faster. By the time the credit card expires, wipe it out, or you get another one and you just keep it going. So, like once a year, you're getting a new credit card. New credit card, zero percent, doesn't hurt us. We're becoming masters over resources. We're becoming masters over our finances. We're becoming very, very good stewards, cheerful givers, right? So if we stick to this strategy, she can do very, very well for herself, okay? So that's velocity banking. She positioned herself for the concept, knows her four major numbers, has a debt tool, right? Has a plan. The goal is pay off debt. At some point, we might transition to 10x our income, build that business, getting to the get into the tax game, because that's what she wants to learn. Potentially walk away from her career, not have to work, but want to work. Now I redefine the definition of work, which means to simply become. It's you're you're just being, you're becoming who you are, you're becoming your purpose, you're fulfilling your purpose here on earth according to your kingdom mandate. Amen. All right, so I'm going to leave you guys with this. Hope this video was helpful for you. Very, very deep. Coming back out, let's regroup, take a breath, right? You might have to watch this video two and three and four and five times over until you really, really get it. There's going to be some things you might have missed, all right? My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. God bless you.